Welcome to what happened on Saturday, a special edition today. Marilyn, how you doing? I'm doing well this morning, Josh. How are you? And and we have I'm, a good guest on here that you're going to introduce here in a minute. But absolutely, and we're going to talk we're, about the shirt um, that I see in the background of that yes. amazing blue bet. We are honored to be joined by Jay Reemersma, a former Michigan Wolverine, a word that I can say today, but my friendly co-host is choosing to avoid. Uh, Jay uh, famously was a uh, player at the University of Michigan in 1991, uh, came through through 1995, then obviously played with Marlon at the Bills, uh, had a great career in the NFL as well. Uh, Jay, thanks for joining us, and where are you, uh, where are you calling us from? I'm calling you from Holland, Michigan. So um, I have no problem saying Michigan. You know, it's the greatest. I have no God's problem country. saying it. I I'll give you as God's country. You know, God put it there and said, "Leave it, let it go." Like, don't even <laughs> don't even go there. Don't visit. <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of get out of the way here, guys. Today, this is your show. Uh, maybe uh, Jay, you could talk to us a little bit about how you ended up at Michigan and you know your career there. I was reading about it this morning. And the divine intervention of you getting hurt as a quarterback. Marlon also was looking to be a quarterback in college, like we've talked about. You know, he ended up as a tight end. And just some of your, uh, you know, some of your memories and, and stories about about being a Wolverine. And then we'll get more into the game, uh, you know, tomorrow. Well, I tell you, it's like you said, it's it was a divine intervention story. I was actually a high school quarterback, and so getting kind of recruited all over the country from schools that, um, you know, kind of focused in on big tall, you know, strong arm quarterbacks that were able to throw the ball a ton and that type of thing. And so got recruited by back then, you know, the Florida schools and then Stanford, UCLA, and just waiting for the moment to have Michigan, you know, offer me and that type of thing. And I re remember through the recruiting process that Cam Cameron, who was the quarterback coach at the University of Michigan, had a great career as a coach in the NFL for a number of years as a, a head coach, also an offensive coordinator from uh, for a lot of teams and that type of thing. When he offered me, it was like just a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I uh, I went ahead and and uh, signed up early. I was kind of sick of the recruiting process. I was It was during basketball season, and I felt like it was – you know, you had to go on trips and all this kind of stuff and you had to play Friday night and you'd miss half the recruiting visit over the weekend and that type of thing. And so when Michigan finally offered me, I just wanted to get it over with, get it done. And that was in the era of, you know, like Todd Collins and Elvis Gerbach. So they were kind of my type of quarterback, you know, six, five, you know, white guys that can't run very fast, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. And so I thought it was a good fit. And so I knew that it was going to take some time for me to have the opportunity to play. But uh, then, you know, God intervened and uh, tore my rotator cuff and I moved to tight end and spring ball and the rest is history. Uh, Marlon, do you remember the first time that, uh, that you met Jay or, or saw Jay on the field? Probably in that twenty-eight nothing loss we had up there, um, yeah, yeah, at, at the big house. But yeah, that's my first time kind of coming across their tight ends and seeing things. And and you know, I, I was I it's, I'm curious because you started as a quarterback, um, and you never would like really like to wear gloves. So where did that come from, and why the why the really the no glove thing? Like you know, you had this great hands, and I was just like. I, this dude just catches everything with nothing on his hands. How, do, how does he do that? So what made you always kind of like, I'm an element guy, no matter what? Yeah, well, you know, I one thing I always did was I went in cold weather in Buffalo. We saw a lot, right? Um, a lot. Yeah. I mean, I always had like uh, one of those handheld things that you, you know, put your hands in and that type of thing. But I didn't like the feel of gloves coming in between the leather and the ball. And it was just kind of weird to me. And I think – because I grew up in <clears throat> in Michigan, kind of in a cold weather like you did, um, you know, playing in Ohio and, and that type of thing, um, you just get accustomed to playing in that kind of conditions. And so it was just something that I, I, I couldn't stand having something in between my, my fingers and the, and the leather of the ball. And um, as long as my hands were warm, like, you know, you're literally only running a play for a few seconds and then you're putting it back in. So as long as my hands were warm, I felt very comfortable out there in whatever the conditions were. 
So, you know, I'm reading through your bio here, here Jay, and you, uh, 1994 season, you became one of the favorite quarterback or targets for, for Todd Collins, you know, with Amani Toomer, who's a name that obviously, you know, people around here will remember. Uh, what do you remember about, you know, your seasons there? Uh, you know, Marilyn has talked quite a bit about the grind of, you know, being a, a college football, you know, a student athlete. What do you remember about your seasons at Michigan? And, you know, were, were those teams, you know, kind of what your expectations were? Because obviously the expectation at Michigan is the same as at Ohio State to win every game and, and to go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think it's fitting for me to be on the show today because what do I remember about Michigan? Three, one, and one against Ohio. <laughs> Three, say it with me, Marlon. Three, one, and one. And the loss was my redshirt year. I didn't even play. <laughs> okay. I like this. Marlon, any thoughts? <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because, you know, we always talk with great, um, you know, memories about the Cooper years. You know, <laughs> those were great times to be a Michigan Wolverine. We want to go back to those days. Um, and it seems like we're kind of working towards that a little bit, too. But, I, you know, Marlon brought up the point earlier, and I think it's important. And I think it started when Bo Schembechler started with Woody Hayes. And there was just this intentionality about this game being the game. And so all through my Michigan career, we had a red segment, you know, you break out the practice schedule into segments, you know, you have a blitz segment, you have a run segment, you have a passing seven on seven segment and all that kind of stuff. All through my Michigan career, we had a red segment. It's like, you know, eight, 10 minutes where we were working on that team down South um, and, and it just was a mindset thing that your whole focus that entire year was about beating that team in Ohio. And uh, it's something that I really cherish, you know, again, three, one and one. So. <laughs> yeah, you can you can have those bragging rights then. I, I think I got a little bit more bragging rights when we were teammates here with the Bills on some of those friendly wagers that we had um, that I was able to be like, uh, OK, hand that over. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> But yeah, you're right. I, th I think that's one of the things that I always wanted to know, like, what, what was it like? Like, so you talk about that red period um, that you guys always had. I, I can say I don't really recall always having a period where we always worked on that game. And that probably is a little bit of the reason of why the success maybe wasn't there, because um, sometimes, you know, you have a coach that maybe hasn't grown up in it. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, you don't understand the importance um, of it sometimes. But what else? Like, what are some of the things? Because, like, we don't say the letter M, right? Like, you'll see we'll get rid of it. We won't say – I, I will never say – I'll say it once. I'll never say Michigan. It's, it's This week, it's that team up north. It right? just rolls right. off the tongue. Look at that, Marlon. It just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> I think I'm about to be sick saying it. No. <laughs> but are there any other traditions uh, that, that you had as a program, like, that week? Like, uh, we famously have a, a countdown clock that we always looked at we could go to and reset but what are some of the things that you guys also did uh in spirit of this rivalry well i, I think you know having a, a dedicated segment each week you know now it wasn't every day you know because you still had to beat you know some pretty good teams in the big 10 but you still had to make sure that you had a focus on that game at the end of the year i think one of the reasons that it it is such a great rivalry is because half our team was from ohio I mean, we had True. Cincinnati Moeller, you know, you know, you named St. Ignatius, all these great, like almost, uh, you know, small college type programs that we would recruit in Ohio and bring up some of those guys like Desmond Howard, Elvis Gerber, right, both right. those guys are from Ohio, right? They're Ohio kids. And so I think it's kind of like the crosstown rival here in, in West Michigan. I'll, I'll give you one. Holland, Zealand. For years, when I was growing up, there was Holland Christian, and then there was Zealand Public. And we went to school in elementary school together, and then all of a sudden, they got a little bit better, and the, and the Christian schools went away. Christian school kids went to Christian school, and I went to public school and that kind of stuff. And so there's just, like, we know these kids and these families. And so there's this, like, animosity that's already present in the process. And then when you have... Ohio and Michigan always coming down typically to a Big Ten championship. It just adds that much to it, you know. So I think um, other other ways that we focused in on it, um, you know, I, I from memory, it's, it's just that segment each week that we would dedicate to Ohio. And, you know, and then when you get out there, it's all about getting comfortable. And then it just becomes, 
okay, who's going to turn the ball over, right? And who's going to make right. a big play? I mean, that's what it comes down to, and that's what makes this game so fun. Did, uh, Jay, I asked Marlon this on Wednesday. Did you um? Did you did you hate Ohio State? Like, I mean, could you could you work yourself up into a lather about you know maybe not being recruited by them or you know choosing not to go there? Marlon told me that he didn't even consider a visit. Uh, to Ann Arbor in his recruiting Not process, done. like like did it did it feel different when you played them the week before? You know, did you did you do a little bit more study work? You know, were the coaches tighter that week? Like like what felt different? You know, in preparation for the game on Saturday. Well, I think it, it feels different just because the intensity is just is just that much higher. It's elevated. It, it reminds me of a regular season game in the NFL to a, a playoff game. Everything is just elevated, amped up. It seems like people are, are playing quicker, faster, harder, you know. And I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. I mean, I wasn't good enough to take a playoff. So I, I had to work very hard on every single play. And so, um, but it just feels that that intensity is just picked up. I mean, practice from, you know, Monday, you know, Sunday practice, Monday practice, Tuesday practice is just amped up a little bit more because you know – when you go out there at noon on Saturday, um, you got to lay it all on the line. And so I, I just think that uh, the intensity level is just incredible. And that's what you see on both sides. Now, did I hate Ohio? I, you know, I didn't hate Ohio. I mean, there were guys that did, though, and they were mostly from Ohio. <laughs> that's, that's the funny part. <laughs> well, I will say um... – we never, I never really hated any of the players from Michigan. Um, yeah, so you got me to say it twice. But I definitely did, was not – I was never going to play. As an, a Columbus kid kind of watching that rivalry, that was never a thought of me to ever consider going up there um, and playing for that team up north. So I get it. Like Ohio State has this tradition where we give out gold pants um, to – the, the team with the score on it. Um, did you guys have any traditions like that where there's some type of hardware, something that mem uh, that kind of moralized that victory um, for you that season? You had a, a, an outstanding record of 3-1-1 one and, one, um, and, and that tie. It's crazy because we we always talk about the tie, right? Like like we, we grew up in an era where you could just go in and be like, hey, it's a 14-14 tie. Okay, so what do we do next? You go, you get on a bus, you go home. That's it. <laughs> Game's over. So, so it's funny to think about ties, but was there any traditions about that? And then which one of those Michigan victories is, is your favorite in, in the rivalry that you've had um, with us? Yeah. You know, I, I don't recall anything from a rivalry or from a, from a specific uh, award or anything like that. I think, I think the game from our perspective, if you beat Ohio, the game itself speaks for itself. I mean, it was that big of a deal. Um, and so one of the things that was interesting, you know, we had you guys came up and um, and, you know, you might have been gone already, Marlon. I, I can't recall, uh, but you guys came up to Michigan and Vrabel uh, was playing. And what we did was we stemmed the tight end the entire game. So we we acted like the tight end was going to go into the boundary. The defense set the defense the front into the boundary. And then I would act like I'm motioning over and get back up on the line and uh, you guys would never shift. And I remember we, we practiced this all week. We might have even done it all season in the red letter or in the red, uh, uh, you know, that segment, the red segment. And, and I remember um, Coach Carr saying, you know, at halftime, man, they're going to make the adjustment. They're going to shift the defense over. And Tim Diakabatuka, I don't know if he had like close to 300 yards rushing. And 321. I remember that, 321. Yeah. I'm, I'm not kidding you, Marlon. You guys never adjusted. We were shocked at halftime. They're like, "Listen, they're gonna they're gonna know that you're not motioning now because you're just stemming." Made it look like motion, but they're gonna make that adjustment. Rabel's gonna get out wide, and you know, then you can't down block him anymore, Jay. You gotta you gotta wash down the inside linebacker and that kind of stuff. And and I'll be danged if you guys never adjusted. And then. Um, funny story. Uh, my kids to this day mock me about it, but I caught a drag route coming across and then turned up the sideline and literally at the one yard line got knocked out to kind of seal the game. And of course, Tim takes it in for a touchdown and gets all the press and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and the boys, the boys look at me like, dad, you just got boned up by a DB. Like what's <laughs> going on? You know, but I said, Hey, we got the win three, one and one. 
you know, it was it was one of our three wins, but it was it's all in good fun. But that that's one memory I have and and blocking down blocking Vrabel all day long and you guys never adjusted. Yes, I, I stand corrected. It was 313, um, but over 300, uh, 300 yards. It was crazy. I watched the game. I was not there. Um, I had already graduated uh, and, and moved on and was, and was in my rookie season with the Bills. But with, ironically, the guy you mentioned, Todd Collins uh, and Reuben Brown, we were all in that same class. But, yeah, that, that's crazy because it always seemed like there was just – we could, we could mentally we always lost focus during that game. Like, it would be tight. It would be close. And then at the end, there was always a play um, or something that you guys made better than we did. And then, of course, I, I was a part of that famous goose egg um, up at the big house uh, where we lost 28 nothing, and, and we had a chance to go on and, and win. And if winner goes to the Rose Bowl, Wisconsin ended up going that year. And if we, if we win that game, we go to the Rose Bowl. We're, we all end up being 10-1-1 and that season. Ironically, we tied them <laughs> that game. Uh, so it's just kind of crazy. I think – for me, my big one of my memories is blocking coming in and getting Coach Cooper's uh, first win um, in 1994, uh, which was uh, you guys had a, and I forget his name. You had a receiver that was talking so much trash and kind of got on there and said, "We want to get Coach Cooper fired." <laughs> that was that was he literally said this on TV to all the media. It's like we we like beating them. We we love it. We love the Cooper era. We want to get him fired. That's our main goal was to get Coach Cooper fired. And we had we got one of his only two victories uh, that he ever had uh, in the series in the rivalry. So it's kind of crazy. So you make the switch. You, you get who 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 tackled you? Do you remember who knocked you out at the one? Was you it? You know Antoine? what? I, I, it's, that's a great question, Marlon. I, I I've struck it from my memory. <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe I got blown up at the one yard line. The boys and it was kind of you know it, it's the end of the year, right? The turf is all like tore up. The grass is crappy. It's kind of muddy and that kind of stuff. And it's no excuse. Um, but I just remember getting blown up and then going off to the sideline and just taking like a divot of clay and mud and dirt up into my grill. And, but I beat your inside linebacker and just kind of ran away from him. Um, um, but it, 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 anyway, great memory. I mean, a great game. I mean, it's one of those games that you look back on and just go, um, that's what college football is all about. Absolutely. Cross town, you know, cross state rivalry. We all grew up together. We kind of got recruited, been on visits together. And the next thing you know, we're playing at the most consequential game of the season at the end of the year when it's all on the line. You know, Jay, I'm going to defend you to your boys. <clears throat> um, you should have them take a look at the 2000 season and your unbelievable play against Green Bay, your touchdown where you reach the ball around the side pylon uh, in the first quarter. <clears throat> have you ever shown them that one? You made the pretty athletic play and, and kind of danced at the end zone and, and reached the ball around the pylon. I, I was on the sideline for that one. That was that was a great play at the one yard line. So if your boys give you shit, make sure you show them that play because because, you know, we remember it here in Buffalo. And I certainly remember it, you know, being down in the field. That's that's a play that, uh, you know, made their dad look pretty athletic in the NFL. So I'll come to your defense there. Can you um, can you talk about a little bit about like Michigan Stadium itself? It's a place that, you know, is really iconic the biggest stadium, uh, I think, in North America. What's it like to play there as, as a, you know, as your home stadium? What, what's the crowd like? What's the atmosphere like on a game day? And then, and then like, what do you think it's going to be like there tomorrow? Well, I, I think Marlon can attest to this. You know, it may be the largest stadium in the country, but it's really not that loud. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's a big bowl shape. Now they've kind of, you know, you know, with all the money and college football and stuff, kind of closed it in, and it's much louder. I've been to a couple uh, Ohio, Michigan games at the end of the year now with, you know, kind of that closed-in section and the big screens and that kind of stuff, so it's loud. But, um, you know, it really wasn't intimidating, I don't think. You know, um, having played in the NFL for a number of years and you go out to uh, Arrowhead Stadium and you you know you go to some of these places where it's just crazy or or coming down and playing Ohio my goodness that place <laughs> just got rocking um, yeah we were crazy Michigan, Michigan has this kind of reputation or at least it did of being kind of the the lawyers and doctors and so we would do <laughs> tennis claps and you know all this kind of stuff it wasn't very loud we were like trying to get people amped up but I think they all wanted to sit on their hands you know and that type of thing but it is a. It has great tradition, um, but I think nowadays it's probably louder than when Marlon and I played. 
yeah, I, I was lost when uh, uh, when Josh asked me that question. I was like, I don't remember it being as loud. I remember being in a shoe a lot more louder because we would close in the, the horseshoe side. And now it's a permanent fixture. They close it in the way they added seats to it. But it, it's just always interesting just to kind of think about it. You know, you talked about the doctors and lawyers and the academic um, the, the, the academic prowess that you guys have. So when you look at your team, who was your favorite teammate Like when you were there? Like who, who st stands out as who was the smartest teammate you had, but then who was your favorite uh, roommate or teammate uh, on, on those Michigan teams that you played with? Oh, gosh. That, you know, I think probably the one that you guys would recognize the most is Tyrone Wheatley. Um, mm. you know, a funny story, when we were getting recruited, I was a quarterback. And, you know, Ty was a quarterback, too. Of course, he could do anything, right? Whatever right. he wanted to do, he could do. Um, but he put them up. I never forget, we did a recruiting thing, and all the college scouts were there and stuff like that. And Ty was there, and I was there. And um, Cam Cameron, who kind of led the drills or whatever, said, hey, let's put Tyrone Wheatley out there at wide receiver and see if you can just peel back, do a five-step drop. He'll take off and just see if you can out-throw him or whatever. So I took a five-step drop, kind of hitched, hitched, chucked it as hard as I could and went about probably 55 yards or something like that. He stopped, waited for the ball to come down, caught it, and then took off. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen a kid that fast or whatever. So Cam come, comes back. He's like, listen, this time do a three-step drop and chuck it just as far. And I'm not kidding you. That kid was so fast that when I took a three-step drop and chucked it the same amount of yards, um, he just like caught it at the end of his fingertips, you know, about 55 yards downfield. Uh, so That's he, he, was, he was a great teammate. You know, a lot of people don't recognize him because um, he's not very outspoken. He was kind of soft spoken, but just had a demeanor and approach to the game that I just really respected. And then he had a great NFL career. Uh, for a mm -hmm. number of years and now went into coaching. And uh, so he and I still text today and it's kind of fun. Yeah, I, I remember him running all over us. So you don't have to remind me <laughs> of how good of an athlete he was. Uh, he was the guy and the catalyst for that shutout victory up at the, the big house. So, yeah, I I, that, I like Coach Wheatley. Um, and I yeah. remember him as a coach here because he coached here with the Bills for a number of years as well. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that people don't realize about Ty, he was such a great athlete that he had to do spring ball, but he also was Big Ten champion in hurdles for track and field. And he literally would go from football practice, practice hurdles, and then wouldn't run all week, show up on whenever the track meets were, and he'd win the Big Ten championship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> that is true. Different... Thank you for reminding me of that because – I ended up running track my last year um, at, at Ohio State. And who wins the 100 meter that year? Tyrone Wheatley. Um, <laughs> I, I placed ninth with a pulled hamstring, hadn't ran track in four years. I get, we, we go to, I want to say it was Illinois or somewhere, super cold. You were hoping it was warm. Uh, and it's like 48 degrees, 45 degrees, crazy snow, uh, almost snowing at times during that weekend. And you're like sitting there like, okay, and Tyrone Whitley comes in and runs like a 10-5 in that cold weather. Uh, and I'm like, this and biggest sprinter I've ever seen and comes down and wins the Big Ten Championship. I'm like, okay, this, this dude can do it all. Like, I can't believe how fast this guy was. Hey, funny story, you know, because he, he's from Inkster, Michigan. And there is the Wheatley rule in track and field here. Um, they, they actually changed all the rules for track and field because he single-handedly – won the state championship by placing first in four events and won the, the team state track and field uh, state championship with one guy winning four events. And so now they have this Mitka thing that kind of, you know, kind of is a scoring system and it all is based on Tyrone Wheatley winning the state championship by himself. <laughs> wow. That's, That's unbelievable. Amazing. We got, uh, we got about five more minutes here with, uh, with Jay Remersma. Jay, you know, one thing that I learned in my time, uh, you know, around the NFL and around the bills is that how many of the guys, you know, talk about their college days, the, the, the pride that NFL guys have in their alma maters, especially when they're playing each other, you know, Marlon referenced it earlier about friendly wagers, you know, that you and he would have, you know, maybe talk to us about how, how closely you still follow the team. You know, are, do you, do you, are you still in contact with a bunch of your former teammates and uh, are you and Marlon going to make a friendly wager here today? 
<laughs> That's a great question. Uh, certainly up to Marlin, you know. I'm always um, down for a friendly wager, always. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I would say that, you know, we follow uh, our alma mater a lot. You know, we would be sitting in those uh, Saturday evening, Marlon knows them well, right? Saturday evening team meetings, getting ready and prepared for the game on Sunday while we were playing in the NFL. And we would be following the scores. I mean, you know, <laughs> yep. um, we try to figure out, hey, what's the score? Who's winning? Who's doing what? Of course, the Ohio-Michigan game was already done because it was a noon start every every uh, every uh, Saturday in November. So, um, you know, I just look at it like um, it was it was a great opportunity to um, connect with, you know, the guys that you competed against in college and then in the NFL. And it was just a connecting point. And it was, it was, it was, there was camaraderie, there was friendly wagers, there was just pride for our school and their school and that type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't know about Marlon, but I still have lifelong friends that I made in college um, that I still stay in contact with. Um, I was at uh, a golf, you know, alumni golf thing uh, here recently and, uh, Jim, who won't be participating tomorrow, pulled me aside. We talked about it, and we, we got a great tight end. This Colston kid, <clears throat> Colston Loveland, is going to be a he, – he might be a first or a second round tight end, I believe. He's that good, just watching him. And so I've been giving him some encouraging uh, comments. He, we exchanged contact information. So much like Ohio, I'm assuming – Michigan, it's it's a family. It's a family affair. Right. Once you're at Michigan, once you're at Ohio, it's it's you're a part of the family. And there's this connection and this base of support, a hub of support that we can lean on each other. We raise a lot of money for uh, guys that um, you know have have been injured through their their uh, college career, didn't in, in you know mental health stuff. And so, and I know Ohio's doing a lot of that same great work. And so, it's a great opportunity just to be a part of family and build community now i i will say because i know we're getting tight on time but yes we do all those things i probably don't have as much uh contact because i stayed in buffalo uh so but you know i'll go home i talk to guys raymond harris guys that uh played well in that series uh and there's guys that i you know were connected on on facebook and i text with you guys here and there but the one thing that i always remember is we always had like this this really cool blood drive battle with the university with Michigan. And it was like one of those things that always stood out to me is yes, we always were rivals and everything, but we competed even in something as small as <laughs> let's see who can raise and, and, and have people donate the amount, the most amount of blood um, for this game. And they still do that to this day. So there's so many great traditions and rivalries that always go uh, hand in hand with this one. Um, and I won't, you mentioned Jim Harbaugh, so I won't mention that. Uh, we won't talk about the turmoil because uh, I, I think that it, it's it's crazy as it is now. So we'll let that settle itself out and then we can talk about that when it's all settled. But what's your prediction for tomorrow? Like, what are your keys to victory um, for your alma mater and that team up north to win and beat my Buckeyes uh, without Coach Harbaugh at the helm? Well, I think you got to be able to establish the run which we've been consistently been able to do all season. Uh, obviously, turnovers are going to be a key to the game. And then J.J. McCartney, McCarthy playing well. Um, and I'd love to see Colston Loveland get involved uh, in some way, show, shape, or form because I just think he's, he's a really uh, almost a generational talent. Like, he's got, he's got some speed. He's got some, uh, some strength and that type of thing. So, um, you know, I'm – and, and J.J. really hasn't played all that well here of late. So I don't know if it's just, um, you know, kind of heading into the season, you know, and, and such high expectations and the pressure's getting to him a little bit here towards the end of the season. I don't know. Um, but I think those are going to be the keys uh, if Michigan is going to pull it out. And um, I, I know – this is the only struggle that I have. I think Michigan actually is the better team. That's my personal opinion. Of course, I'm you a would little say that. You would say that. You would say that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you know how difficult it is, Marlon, to get three victories against that rival in a row. I mean, that's almost unprecedented. Unless you're, like, back when I was playing, it was relatively easy. 
<laughs> this is good stuff right here. This is good stuff. Do you, uh, you know, I, I was actually just thinking of some terms here. Uh, JD, are you active on social media? Yeah. You think maybe uh, a wallpaper of the uh, of the winning team, Marlon, if uh, if that team up north wins, maybe uh, you're going to have to post up on our Twitter account uh, a nice picture of Michigan. And, Jay, you would do the same if Ohio State wins and, and you would, uh, you know, put on your Facebook or, or on your uh, – Wow, man, we Social gonna do media it We're gonna do it on Twitter. Like, you change change this change the profile. I'll go ahead. You can you can send me any picture of that team up north of your choice. <laughs> and I will put it as my handle for a week. We'll go for a week. Uh because I, I don't think I can look at that, that those colors that any longer in a week. Yeah. No. All right. It's on. Let's go. That's, yeah, uh, I, remember, that's I remember one of those crazy things of that talk about that Tim Biaka Patuka game. That was the game where I was so confident. Um, that we were going to win that game. I think I had a few bets with uh, Henry Jones and Thomas Smith and all the guys. Like, listen, and 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 the funny thing about those wagers is it was just a way to stay close. But everyone wanted to get on it, and I was like, straight up, hundred dollars a game. Like, that's it. Like, I'm not taking anything less than hundred dollars a game. Yeah, I paid out so much money. That game. <laughs> so mad, I just went and got Chris hundreds. I just had them ready to go. Like, here, here. Here, here, and, and Marlon, awesome. Marlon, you, you got to know who you're going against. You don't go against Big Bank Hank. <laughs> I don't know why I took that bet against him, and I literally it was like he was like, you know, I'll take the spread. Like, nope, straight up, I don't really care. Like, win or take all, like it doesn't matter. You win by a point. We went, yeah. He was like, I, I hundred. I want, I want a big, I want a Benjamin, Chris, one hundred Benjamin, went, and give me my money when I see you at the facility. And I was just walking in, just handing in money, like here, Henry, here, Thomas, here, Ken. Here, Kurt Jules. So it was one of those games. Just like, yeah, I, I, never again. I'm, I'm, I'm not betting that crazy again. So yeah, those rivalries are always fun. But last question for me is: we, we got your keys. Is there a score prediction? Do you, do, what, what do you think? What do you think the final score is going to be? Gosh, you know, I, I want to say Michigan by ten, uh, but you know, uh, I'll, I'll take Michigan by three. Okay, and okay. Where, where are you going to watch the game? Where are you going to watch the game, Jay? We're just watching it here at home, and uh, we, we got our, our uh, two boys that are in college. They're coming back, and so um, we're just going to hang out as a family. We're big on family. Awesome. Well, thanks so much uh, for joining us. You've been uh, a lot of fun and a great guest. Hopefully, we can have you on uh, our other show, If the Walls Could Talk in Buffalo, sometime to talk about your uh, your your own football journey and obviously your time with the Bills and uh going forward from there so jay thanks uh thanks so much for your time and uh i'm gonna stay out of it and maybe you guys could uh do a go buckeyes and then a go wolverines to to let us go here o-h-i-o right there it is all <laughs> right go blue go blue hey happy all right, thanksgiving buckeyes. everybody happy really thanksgiving to you good seeing you and thank you for your time today of no, course thank you time. jay